What's going on, everybody? I hope you're doing well as always. Now, today, you may notice that my chart looks a little bit different. I've changed the colors of my candles for the first time in a while. I like the uh, smoothness of this. It kind of reminds me of water. So go ahead and smash that like button for me if you also like this chart setup or if you want me to go back to the classic old bit kind of darker blue and black. But anyway, guys, look, the topic of today's video is bodies versus wicks. Now, this is a very, very important thing to understand because I see a lot of people get confused about these sorts of things and they don't even know that this is the thing that's confusing them. So, you know, what I'm going to talk about here is specifically what is more valuable for what situation, what is the important thing in certain situations out of these two and how they kind of combine together um, and hopefully by breaking these down individually when I eventually combine them you're going to have a much clearer understanding of how to visualize these things okay so I really really hope that you enjoy this video I won't make it too long as always but first of all if you are new here welcome go ahead and smash that like button for me and subscribe to the channel if you are new or if you just haven't done it already. If you wanna learn more about the psychological sides of trading as well as the strategic and putting things all together, overcoming confusion, all of the different processes that go into um, successful trading, then I highly recommend going and checking out the introduction video um, that is linked in the description box below. I appreciate you, let's get on with the video. Okay, so bodies versus wicks. So, okay, that's kind of revealed everything. Let's just go right here. Okay, so the first thing is the close is the king. In other words, the body, okay? If you imagine that we've got a candle like so, let's just mark this on. So we imagine we've got a candle. We've got the open, the high, the low, and the close. Now, let's say that this is a bullish candle right here, meaning this is the close up here, I meaning it's, Oh, sorry about that. I mean, it started down here and ended up here. Now, because we close here, if there was a level right here that we were looking at, for example, at one point in time, price was all the way up here. Okay. Now, this is significant because if it's then come all the way down here and closed below this level, that is an indication that price was unable to go above. Now, of course, there are different ways of internalizing what's going on with price. You know, you talk to a quote unquote institutional trader, they'll tell you that, you know, orders have been grabbed, liquidity has been grabbed above here, and then, you know, we've pushed below a little bit. Okay. Now, other people just tell you that it just didn't have the strength to break above and it will come down. Whichever one you view it as, to be honest, it doesn't really matter. Okay. The bottom line is the close is going to be more valuable for us. Why is that? Well, because the close is giving us the full completed information of that candle. Okay. Instead of us coming to the chart and, you know, monitoring it, the whole candle was like, oh, it's up here now and blah, blah. You're just taking the information from when it's completed, when it's done. Okay. That is the only reason why the close is so important. Now, just as a little side thing for you, um, when people ask me, oh, like, you know, I've only got these hours to trade and, you know, blah, 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 blah. You've got to understand that when you understand the close, you can understand your time better. For example, when you're trading the four hour chart, you're going to get a close every four hours. Okay. Now, if you are basing your part of your analysis off of the close, then you only need to check the charts every four hours. And so you can remedy this with whatever time you have available for example four hours maybe you can add a five hour chart in a six hour seven hour and eight hour whatever it is okay because it gives you a little bit more flexibility with your time your uh yeah with your time so obviously there are a few other ways to do that do it besides that but i just thought i'd share that with you just as a little um insight so long story short the close is king okay so the next thing is wicks. So I've just summarized each of these things into two things here. Now, the wicks vary, but they show liquidity. Okay, so if we've got the close sorted, you know, if we had no wicks in here whatsoever, and we just had this candle, in fact, let's go and let's remove the wicks right here and look at the chart. 
okay, we can see that the way the price moves, it actually looks fairly clean. It kind of looks almost like a tick chart. Okay, we can see price moves fairly easily within the ranges. And generally speaking, you could mark out most of the time the major levels where price is respecting, you know, the major lows, the major highs, all of this type of thing. Okay, it's fairly easy to see what is going on. But when you add in the, the, uh, the wicks, what you're going to see is you're going to see piercings through these lines. You're going to see rejections. You're going to see different elements that come into price. You're going to see these things with each new touch. We get deeper and all of these other sorts of things like this. Okay, And this, this is not some sort of expanding pattern I'm drawing here. These are liquidity deepening lines. Okay, And so what this means is it means that when you're able to break these down in between price and you'll be able to look at one thing and be like, right, okay, that's the close, whereas it's the wicks, and you're able to understand these things individually, when you transition from marking out a level based off of the close and you transition to wicks and looking at the wicks, you can see it in terms of liquidity, meaning if every time we come into a level, it's significantly more likely that we're going to take out the previous level. Okay, meaning one, okay, second touch, we come deeper, third touch, we come even deeper. Okay, now, price comes up here for a third time and doesn't come deeper. Yes, but the close has come higher. Okay, and so something has come higher, even though it wasn't the wick. And so we have had a higher level right here. Okay. Now, the fact that this is actually lower after we've had these three up here, and we have this one now lower indicates that we could be seeing a potential move down. Why is that? Well, because most of the orders would have been grabbed here. We would have had the last reminiscent orders coming in right here. Okay. Now, because of that, somewhere within this wick region up here on a lower time frame, there would have been something that we could have played around with over here. Okay, that was beginning to push price lower. All of these orders are starting to come into fruition. And then eventually we are going lower and lower and lower because the way that you've got to look at it, and this is kind of transitioned into a bit of a liquidity lesson. Um, but the way that you've got to look at it and the way that, you know, that you should understand it is ultimately when price is failing to go lower after this has happened these orders have happened and now they're keeping price below this level and then the same thing holds true right here now they're keeping price below here and these are the situations where traditional understandings of price will work because you are working off of the assumption and the um, understanding of how liquidity works rather than just lower lows, lower highs, etc, etc. Not that there is anything wrong with that whatsoever. It just comes down to personal preference, okay, in terms of what you've tested and what you're familiar with, um, in terms of, you know, understanding the analysis, technically, at least anyway, okay. So it's a very, very simple thing that we are able to understand here. And so let's just see. So therefore, closes the focus and the wicks are refinements. What do I mean by this? Well, the close is going to give you the information that you need most of the time. Okay, the close is going to be that thing that gives you the confidence and the understanding of where price wants to go and why, whereas the wicks are going to be refinement. Because if you imagine that we've got a level here, and we've got a level here, and price, I'm going to dictate the the closes as the line chart does. So if we've got something like this, and these are the closes, and we're staying within these, this kind of border here, but we've got these big long wicks piercing through the levels on either side. Okay, just ignore the terrible drawing. Okay. What this means is it means that the close and the wicks should be our refinement, meaning the wicks are going to be what caught, catch you out most of the time. Okay. And so when people are confused with trading, I always say to break it down into its constituent compartments and master one individually. If you're going to be using the close to monitor the data of how it's respecting levels and which levels it's respecting, then the wicks are going to be pieces of information for basically avoiding getting caught out on the wrong side. Okay. Now there are, if you're going to go into heavy refinement, obviously 
you know, that's going to involve reducing the stop loss down, getting a little bit more technical. Whereas obviously the easier way is just to have a wider stop loss and sacrifice more of your reward rather than sacrificing your risk. Okay. So that's pretty much it, guys. Um, I really, really hope that this has helped you in some way or another. I'd really appreciate if you liked the video for me. Uh, if you did and consider subscribing as I mentioned at the beginning um, but uh, but yeah let me know if you guys have any more content ideas and as always guys make sure that whatever you learn on this channel or any channel really you go ahead and you backtest without risk you backtest it at least 100 times journal all of the results and then make your own decisions about what works and what doesn't work okay it's very very important that you don't just watch videos and just get into the habit of just watching videos you must go and test it not test it on live markets that's stupid you've got to test it without risk you want to back test it because when you haven't got any emotions that is going to be where you can actually make objective decisions and learn and then anything from that point onwards is your decision and it's performance based okay so guys i really really appreciate you watching this video um, and until next time, guys, take it easy and I'll see you soon.